Here's a seven step framework you can use to take over any fire alarm sensory station. And no matter if you're a technician, electrician, or an existing fire alarm company. So let's get straight into it. Step one, you wanna inspect the system. You wanna show up to the site. You wanna verify the system is free of troubles. If there are any troubles, you wanna log those troubles down as you make a charge them to fix those troubles. You also wanna see if you can get inside with the default password. So that way you can change the account information and receiver information. If you can't get into it, then you move on to step two. So step two, you wanna decide your connection method. If you can't gain access to the fire alarm control panel through the default password, then you're going to have to install an external communicator. This external communicator will connect to the phone line so that way it can relay those trouble alarms or event signals over to the central station. In step three, you want to plan your installation. So if you're using an external communicator, the communicator can be connected with IP. So you want to coordinate with the customer. Where is their network? Where could you plug into their network and how far you're going to have to run that wire because once you start building your price, you're going to want to think of all the things that you're going to need to actually install this communicator. So step four is you want to handle the paperwork. You want to give the customer the central station monitoring agreement with the information filled out on it, their account number, the phone number they can reach the call central station. And once you get that paperwork back, you actually go inside of your portal and send that application over to the central station so they can activate that account. And step five is your fire department compliance. You want to make sure you fill out the form TB60 to let them know what type of signals you're gonna be sending to their terminals. Is it gonna be automatic smoke alarm? Is it gonna be CO detection? Is it gonna be water flow and supervisory? You have to let the fire department know on a form TB60 that you submit to your central station so that way they can get it approved by the fire department. In step six, you wanna go there now and install your fire alarm communicator. You wanna program the communicator, you wanna test it and connect it to your fire alarm control panel, and you wanna do 100% test to make sure each and every signal is relayed over to your central station and you have the same exact messages at the central station as it is on a fire alarm control panel. In step seven, once you program your central station, got everything all validated, now it's time to activate that central station so that way every signal is live and we can get the fire department in to respond to the emergency. But before you do that, you have to do step eight. And step eight is scheduling a central station inspection with the fire department. You're gonna need your base building approval for that particular client and you're gonna need the approved TB60. Once you submit all that paperwork, you are able to schedule for the central station inspection. They will give you a B45 with the inspection date. All you got to do is show up, test some signals, and they will give you the approval. So that is how you would take over any central station. It doesn't matter if you can get inside of the program or if you have to install an external DAC. So if you want to learn more about Fire Alarm, you can join our training center where we're going to have live events for night set level one, two, three, and four. Also show you how you can get your New York State license. And we also transforming technicians to CEOs. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.